ready. Our timekeeper is right here. I know this is the last thing that we're going to remember before the exam, you guys.
With that being said, the speaker and audience relationship must be acknowledged. The speaking needs to be audience centered, and speaking should think of an audience as a group of individuals with motiv motivation, decisions, and choices rather than indifferent. So that being said, this is um, like an assessment or evaluation of who you are going to be talking to during a speech. Um, understand their background, sex, age, education level is all important to um, resonating your message in a um, effective way. So an example of this would say um, a politician that came to talk to a school, their topic of discussion may be more on um, lowering the cost, the cost of student loans because that would, um, the audience could connect to that being college students rather than um, say something like lowering health insurance that would resonate to more of an adult um, audience that can connect with that. And the second um, assumption of the rhetoric is the effective public speaker employs a number of proofs in the presentation. And this is the speech preparation and speech making. And these use the three proofs um, as guidelines to the speech making. And we're finally going to get to know what those three proofs mean. So we already discussed the three proofs a few times already because it's so that much important. It's so, so important. Uh, the first proof is ethos. So ethos is how you perceive the speaker's character, intelligence, and goodwill. Uh, so a quote from uh, one of the authors is, ethos is a character. Character impl implicates trust. Trust is based on relationship, and relationship persuades. What the rhetoric is all about, and public speaking is all about, is about persuading. So ethos is really important because you make these relationships to persuade. If you're me, uh, so for example, um, if I'm a really mean guy and I strap you down to a chair and I demand that Dunkin' Donuts is better than Starbucks and I don't even listen to what you have to say, then I am not I am not doing like what Aristotle means by ethos. I, if I'm a kind-hearted, genuine person, I want to see your point, I want to uh, hear what you have to say, and maybe since you're seeing that I'm seeing what you have to say, your, um, your viewpoint might change as well. Uh, next is Logos. It's uh, the logical proof. So the logical proof is the use of arguments, evidence, and the speech. So basically, it, uh, it, it uh, relies on reason and logic. Um, a real life example of this would be if I'm a speaker talking to you as an audience, saying, uh, trying to persuade you guys how water is important to survive. And then after I persuade you guys that yes, water is, uh, is necessary to survive. We talk about Flint, Michigan, and how they really need clean water. And I'm, I'll bring facts and statistics to the table, stating how they don't have clean water, how they have diseases, and uh, they get poisoned children, adults from the dirty water, and it's just not a healthy environment. Um, just a, a quote. That's just a fact. If you have been in Flint any time from April 2014 to today, you've drank the water, you've eaten the food. You've washed your clothes, you've taken a shower, you brush your teeth. All these things would uh, affect you and get, get you poisoned or um, some sort of sickness. Uh, the third is pathos. Pathos is um, emotional proof. So pretty much you bring the emotions of a crowd to kind of accept and that's what you use to persuade. So this has become the instrument of proof when emotions are stirred in them. So what that means is like, I use your joy, your hatred, your fear to, to guide you into this persuasion. This is what you need to do. You're sad. This is how you get happy. You're happy. I'm going to make you more happy. You're fearful. I don't want you fearful. Um, so if I appeal to your softer side as the audience and I'm uh, trying to talk, persuade you guys to adopt a dog or donate money for um, I don't know, animal cruelty, what would I do? I would appeal to your emotional side and play a Sarah McLaughlin animal cruelty commercial and hopefully you guys donate money or something. But uh, the most important thing about these three radical proofs is ethos, locos, and pathos all work together in sync. So the most persuasive you could get is if all three of them are present. If you could get all three of these to, if you could persuade someone using all three of these, it will most likely uh, work in your favor. So we're just gonna, I have a short, one minute clip, two minute clip, that's what I mean that. appeals. Ethos, logos, and pathos. Ethos is how you convince an audience of your credibility. Winston Churchill began his 1941 address to the U.S. Congress by declaring, 
I have been in full harmony all my life with the tides which have flowed on both sides of the Atlantic against privilege and monopoly, thus highlighting his virtue as someone committed to democracy. Much earlier, in his defense of the poet Archias, Roman consul Cicero appealed to his own practical wisdom and expertise as a politician. Drawn from my study of the liberal sciences and from that careful training to which I admit that at no part of my life I have ever been disinclined. And finally, you can demonstrate disinterest or that you're not motivated by personal gain. Logos is the use of logic and reason. This method can employ rhetorical devices such as analogies, examples, and citations of research or statistics. But it's not just facts and figures. It's also the structure and content of the speech itself. The point is to use factual knowledge to convince the audience, as in Sojourner Truth's argument for women's rights. I have as much muscle as any man and can do as much work as any man. I have plowed and reaped and husked and chopped and mowed, and can any man do more than that? Unfortunately, speakers can also manipulate people with false information that the audience thinks is true such as the debunked but still widely believed claim that vaccines cause autism. And finally, pathos appeals to emotion, and in our age of mass media, it's often the most effective mode. Pathos is neither inherently good nor bad, but it may be irrational and unpredictable. It can just as easily rally people for peace as incite them to war. Most advertising, from beauty products that promise to relieve our physical insecurities to cars that make us feel powerful, relies on pathos. And just to reiterate with pathos, 